This astronaut has crash-landed on an unknown planet where apes are the intelligent and dominant species. But he is about to learn a shocking truth regarding how this happened. The year is 2029, and a man named Captain Leo Davidson is training a genetically enhanced monkey named Pericles to fly a space pod. Leo works at the Oberon Space Research Station. Pericles messes up the landing and panics, and Leo gives him a treat to calm down. Next, Leo brings Pericles to the lab where all the other genetically enhanced monkeys are kept. He goes to watch a video message from his friends and family on Earth, and just then, the power in the entire space station fluctuates. Leo is asked to report for duty. He is informed that the space station has encountered a strange electromagnetic storm. One of the analysts notes that there is a radio transmission coming out of the storm, and when he plays it, it is revealed to be every radio signal that has ever been strong enough to leave Earth. They assume that the signals reached the storm, and now the storm is reflecting them to the ship. Leo is told to get Pericles ready to go into the storm for a preliminary investigation. He argues that this is the job of a human, so he should go, but his superiors tell him that they have a protocol in place. First, the monkeys are sent in, and if the journey appears to be safe, a manned flight is considered. Leo helps Pericles get into the pod and tells him to follow the procedure they practiced in training and come straight back home. As Pericles' pod approaches the electromagnetic storm, it starts to go off course, and then it stops appearing on the radar. Leo says that they have to do something, but his superiors tell him to stand down. Leo is not happy with this order, and he secretly decides to go after Pericles in another pod. His superiors order him to come back through the radio, but he ignores them. Leo's pod enters the storm, and he spots Pericles' pod. Just then, a portal opens, and the Pericles disappears. Leo is bewildered by this. Moments later, another portal opens, and Leo's pod goes into it. As the pod goes through the portal, its clock starts malfunctioning, and then, Leo arrives in an unknown planetary system. The controls in his pod stop functioning and he crash lands on the planet, which appears to have greenery and water. Leo's pod falls into a river and sinks while he swims out. Leo walks around the jungle for a while and then he comes across an old man, a young woman and many other humans, all of whom appear to be running from something. Leo decides that he should probably run as well and he quickly learns that the humans are running from an army of apes wearing thick armor. The apes capture most of the humans, including Leo. Leo encounters the commander of the ape army, General Thade, and is shocked to learn that the apes on this planet can speak. Next, Leo and the other humans are loaded into a cage and taken through what appears to be an ape city. Leo learns that this is a society where apes are the intelligent and dominant species, while humans are treated like dirty animals. As they are going through the city, the ape children throw stones at them. An ape named Ari stops the children and tells them to not indulge in this kind of behavior, even if their parents tell them it's okay. Leo notices this, and Ari takes notice of him as well. All the humans are brought to an ape slave trader named Limbo. He orders them to be cleaned and put in cages. General Thade arrives at his shop, and his second-in-command, Atar, warns Limbo about Leo, claiming that he is feisty because he dared to look Thade in the eye. Limbo says that a good way to bring humans in line is by killing one and hanging the body, but Thade says the human rights organization is already on his back about things like this. Thade tells Limbo that he promised his niece a pet for her birthday, and Limbo takes out a little human girl for her. He also gives her a collar to put on the little girl. Next, Limbo starts marking all the humans with a branding iron, and Ari arrives to stop him. She is against this mistreatment and torture of human beings, and he tells her that the only reason he puts up with her antics is because her father is a senator. Ari argues that humans aren't beasts, and they can even be taught to live as equals to apes. She says she can prove it, and approaches the cage that Leo is in. Leo grabs the branding iron and takes Ari hostage. Taking advantage of the situation, the young woman named Dana tries to escape, but she is caught by the guards. Leo whispers to Ari that he needs her help, and Ari tells Limbo that she will buy both Leo and Dana. Next, Ari brings Leo and Dana home, and her father is outraged that she keeps bringing more wild humans home. Ari points to Leo and says that this one is different, but her father says that you can hardly tell one human from another. 
they all look the same, racist. Leo and Dana work alongside the other human slaves at the house, while Aris' father hosts a dinner for several important people. General Thade arrives and talks to him about how the humans are infesting all their lands. Ari argues that this is because the ape cities are encroaching on their habitats. Thade argues that humans reproduce too fast, and one of the guests claims that wild humans carry terrible diseases. Ari replies that there is no way for them to know this, because the army burns the bodies of the wild humans they capture. She gestures to her father to reprimand General Thade for this behavior, but Thade says that such extreme practices are necessary for the protection of ape society. They all pray to Simos, the first ape, before eating dinner, and the prayer reveals that they believe one day Simos will return to bring peace and prosperity to the apes. On the subject of spirituality, one of the government officials claims that humans have no soul, and Ari disagrees with him. Leo is serving food, and Thade knocks him over and mockingly opens his mouth to check for a soul. This act thoroughly upsets Ari, and she leaves. Thade follows Ari to her room and expresses romantic feelings for her, but she claims that he is only interested in her because of her father's influence and his own ambition. Thade gets angry and leaves. As he mounts his horse, two soldiers arrive and tell him that there is something he needs to see. Meanwhile, Leo escapes from his cage at the senator's house. He asks Dana if she can take him to where they first met, where his pod sank, and she says she can. But first, they'll have to rescue her family from Limbo's shop. They rush out, and another slave human, Teevil, joins them. Thade and the two soldiers arrive at the spot where Leo's pod sank, and the soldiers tell him that they saw something come here from the sky, with wings made of fire. Thade decides that no one but him can know about this, and kills the two soldiers. Meanwhile, Leo and Dana rescue Dana's family, and start heading through the city toward the jungle, alarming the citizens, and in turn, the army. They run through the house of an ape couple about to get it on, causing them to jump. Always remember to lock the door, people. On the way, they run into Ari and Krull, Aris' assistant. Ari wants to take them back, but Leo tells her that if she can get them out of the city, hell show her something that will change her world. Ari admits that Leo is not like the humans she usually encounters, and agrees to take them through a secret passage she knows. As the group is about to get out of the city, Atar spots them, and Dana's father fights him off to buy them some time. He is killed by Thade, who orders Atar to find all the humans, especially Leo. Meanwhile, Leo and the gang arrive at the lake where his pod sank. Leo inches closer to the water, and Ari gasps. Teevil explains that the apes are afraid of water because they can't swim. Leo jumps in and comes out with a bag from his pod. He takes out a gun and a device that acts as a beacon for his space station to locate. The device shows that the station is already on this planet, and Leo is glad to know that they are looking for him. He decides to head in the direction of the space station, and the rest of the group follows him. Ari asks where Leo is from, and he explains that he is from another planet. Just then, Limbo and his thugs arrive to capture the humans again, but Leo uses his gun to control the situation. The humans tell Leo to kill Limbo, but Ari says by killing Limbo, Leo would lower himself to his level. Leo decides to take Limbo prisoner. Kroll grabs Leo's gun and destroys it, fearing that Leo could use it on them too. Leo is frustrated with this, but he decides to keep moving. Thade meets with Aris' father and tells him that she has been kidnapped by the humans. He says that he can get her back, but for that, he needs to declare martial law so that he has complete power and he can rid this planet of humans once and for all. Aris' father agrees. Ari asks Leo about his planet, and he reveals that on his planet apes are kept in zoos for amusement and experimented on for science. Ari is upset, and Leo sadly confesses that humans do worse things to their own kind. Ari is impressed by his sensitive nature. Thade visits his father on his deathbed and tells him about Leo, who he believes is not from this world. His father hears this and confesses that their religious scriptures have lied about their origin. Their family are direct descendants of Simos, and they have passed down this secret through generations. He tells Thade that a long time ago, humans were the masters and apes were their slaves. Thade asks how this is possible, 
and his father shows him a human-made gun. He says that the power of human beings is invention and technology. He tells Thade that this weapon has the power of a thousand spears. He further adds that human ability for invention goes hand in hand with their tendency for cruelty and violence. He warns Thade that more humans will arrive following Leo and advises him to kill them all. Meanwhile, Ari tells Leo that his device is leading them to the forbidden region of Kalima, the place where their religion says God breathed life into Simos, the first ape. To get to Kalima, they have to cross a river which is guarded by the ape army. Leo suggests that they steal their horses to cross the river because horses can swim and apes can't. The plan is almost successful, but during the chaos, Ari falls off her horse. Leo saves her and swims across the river with her on his back. Meanwhile, Thade gathers his entire army and marches toward Kalima. Ari tells Leo that the humans here are expecting him to save them, but Leo says that he hasn't made any such promises. Ari points out that he fell out of the stars and stood up to their ape oppressors, so it's no surprise that the humans believe in him. Next, they arrive where Leo's device has been leading them, and it turns out to be the ruins of the Oberon space station. Leo is confused, because these ruins appear thousands of years old, but he was on the space station just two days ago. He accesses the ship's logs to make sense of all this, and learns the shocking truth. The space station entered the storm to look for him, and ended up crashing on this planet. They didn't find him because the portal he entered pushed him forward in time. After the space station crashed, the genetically enhanced monkeys helped the crew survive, but soon they became too strong and too smart to control, and they mutinied against their human controllers. Their leader was a monkey named Simos. Hence, the ape population of this planet is descendants of the genetically enhanced monkeys, while the humans are descendants of the crew. Leo can't believe it. Leo comes out of the ruins and finds that all the human tribes have arrived because they've heard the story of the man who stood up to the apes. Next, Leo learns that Thades' legions are coming for them, and he tells the humans to run and hide, but they don't listen. They believe he is their savior. Ari goes to Thade and offers him her hand in marriage in return for leaving the humans alone, but Thade, who no longer needs her, brands her hand with the human mark instead and sends her back to die with the humans. Leo contemplates what to do next, and he notices that there is still enough power in one of the space station's nuclear fuel cells to fire the engines one last time. He gets an idea. The next morning he tells all the humans to hide behind the ship and sends out some as bait to lure Thades' armies. When the first wave of Thades' soldiers arrives near the ship, Leo fires the engine, and the soldiers are sent flying in the opposite direction. Fear and confusion spread in the ranks of Thades' army, and Leo seizes this chance and tells the humans to charge. However, Thade is not deterred. He marches forward and his army follows. An intense battle commences between the humans and the apes. After some violent fighting, Thade sets his sights on Leo. The two fight it out, but Leo is no match for him. However, right as Thade is about to crush Leo, a pod descends from the sky, causing all the fighting to stop. The pod opens, and it is revealed to be Pericles. All the apes assume that it is the great Simos returning, and bow to him. Leo grabs Pericles and his bag, which has a gun in it, and takes him along, hoping to explain to the ape population where they came from. However, Pericles runs into the ruins, and Thade seizes this chance to attack Leo. The two fight it out inside the ship, and Pericles tries to protect Leo, but Thade knocks him into a wall. Leo tries to shoot Thade, but he knocks the gun out of Leo's hand and seizes it for himself. He is about to shoot Leo, when Leo cleverly locks him inside a room of the station. Atar arrives, and Thade asks him to free him, but Leo tells him the truth about their origin and Atar feels betrayed by Thade. He refuses to help him. Thade fires the gun at the door repeatedly to no avail, and finally he gives up. Next, all the dead from the battle are buried, and Atar makes sure that they are all buried without a headstone, so that apes and humans are mourned as equals from now on. Leo decides to take the pod and try to get back to Earth. Ari asks him to stay, but Leo says if there is a chance he can return to Earth, he has to take it. 
He kisses both Ari and Dana goodbye and leaves. Leo goes through the storm and returns to Earth. His pod barely makes it in one piece, and he crash lands near the Lincoln Memorial. However, when he gets out, he discovers that instead of Lincoln, there is a statue of an ape named Thade. It is revealed that he has landed on an Earth where apes are the dominant species. This means that the planet he previously landed on was also Earth, just in ancient times, and his crew letting the genetically enhanced monkeys lose changed the entire course of evolution, making apes the dominant species as opposed to humans. The End Thank you for watching. Be sure to like our channel and subscribe if you enjoy content like this. Also, let us know what movie you would love us to recap for you.